The Northman Ending Explained The latest movie from Robert Eggers was an interesting one for sure. With a star-studded cast and a story that bared a similar resemblance to Hamlet, but what happened at the end between Amleth and his uncle? Well, let's find out. Here is the Northman ending explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Throughout the movie, we'd followed Prince Amleth as he tried to seek revenge on his uncle for the murder of his father, King Ovendil, when Amleth was just a young child. After hearing that his uncle, Fjolnir, had fled to Iceland after the kingdom that he killed his brother for and used to rule was taken by somebody else, Skarsgård's Amleth spent the remainder of the movie gradually, bit by bit, haunting the land and trying to get inside of his uncle's mind, whilst also earning his trust and keeping his identity a secret. He noticed his mother was also still there with him, and at that point he felt she was being held captive for all of these years. As time went on, in the finale of the movie, we saw Amleth reveal to his mother his true identity and his plans on avenging his father, but it was here where we saw a twist that we didn't expect. It turned out that she ordered the murder of Amleth's father and also planned for Amleth to be killed in the process. This was due to not really wanting to be with him. She referred to Amleth as her cursed child. She was once a slave that was assaulted and impregnated, which led him to make her queen out of pure necessity. He never really loved her, he just put up with her. The person who she truly loved was the uncle, and the person who murdered Amleth's father. This led Amleth to go on and kill his uncle and his mother's eldest son out of pure rage, while starting the beginning of the end. He took his heart and went on the run, which led Fjolnir to round up the slaves and take them off one by one, until he got to Olga, but it was here where we saw Amleth return which allowed Olga to run free, and a battle broke out which led to Amleth being held captive and beaten mercilessly. After being beaten, we saw some ravens appear and break him free from being tied. The ravens felt like they symbolized multiple things, and made an appearance throughout the movie when Amleth most needed them. Orvindil was a war raven, and also Odin was referred to as a raven god, so there was definitely something on his side looking out for him. It was here where on screen we saw a warrior-looking woman appear on a horse, and the mythical elements of riding off into Valhalla was something that we saw on screen, and what Amleth thought was actually happening. He thought he'd passed on, when in reality it was Olga who appeared, put him on the back of a horse, and made sure that he was okay. As she said, she returned for him. What we saw on screen was what was going on inside Amleth's head, and nothing more. We saw this split reality multiple times throughout the movie, for example, when Amleth went to take the sword from the shadows, the battle that took place all happened within his mind, but in reality, it was only a few simple steps. After he'd recovered, Olga persuaded him to leave with her, and to forget about the revenge and to live their life together, and it was here where we saw him kiss her wound and his vision saw that she was bearing two of his children. In order for him to continue the bloodline and not put any of them in danger, he felt he needed to go back and seek revenge completely to ensure their safety for the future, even if he didn't make it back. We saw him return, and he quickly murders his mother and what would be his youngest half-brother. He had other things on his mind now, and even though he said he wouldn't kill his mother or a young child, he had no issues doing so. Afterwards, we saw Fjolnir appear after seeing the bodies there, and said that he would meet Amleth at the Gates of Hell, where they will do their final battle. This is referring to the volcano that sits just near the land that they hold. We often heard that vengeance would take place at fiery gates, and we see this in the finale. Amleth sets off to fight his uncle and we witnessed an epic battle between the two. At one point, his uncle had the upper hand after slicing off part of Amleth's arm, but we saw him get the rage and vengeance inside of him and the wolf-like mentality that we saw. Amleth rose up and killed his uncle, but at that point, we also saw Amleth get killed too. A blade straight through the heart, just like his mother, it's here where we saw a lot of things tie together. We saw Amleth shed a tear, something he hadn't done since he was younger, and was told that he would no longer shed a tear until his father's death was avenged. And that was something that we saw in the final scene when the focus was put upon it going down his face. He was finally able to. It was also quite fitting that it was killed when seeking revenge, due to the fact that Amleth spoke earlier about how he didn't know how to live without wanting to seek vengeance for his father's death. He mentioned how he would see what living was like after, and then see if life was worth it. However, he never got to see it, which led me to believe that he wouldn't be able to live without that burning, fiery rage inside of him. 
We know for certain that Olga and his future twins are going to be okay, due to the fact that we heard her monologue at the end that they're safe and well and his sacrifice worked. We then also saw the horse riding off into the sky like we saw earlier. However, this time it was real. Amleth was riding off into the gates of Valhalla, and we also saw this within the reflection in his eyes. And as he mentioned several times throughout the movie, he would see everybody again, in which he now will. The ending did pose a question to me though. Was Amleth's uncle the main villain? We heard how the king didn't love his wife, was lazy, and wasn't a nice person at all. And Amleth was off to seek revenge and broke up an existing family that had got on with their life for the following 20 or so years. Leading me to think that although Amleth is the protagonist in our eyes, and we follow the journey from his perspective, I don't know if he necessarily was by the end. This was only due to revelations throughout the movie, so I'm not saying that Amleth was a bad guy, but I don't know if Fjolnir was as bad as what we were led to believe at the start. I thought this movie was great. It definitely felt like an Eggers movie, and it delivered in terms of switching between mythological visuals, reality, and a well-paced narrative and story that kept us hooked. What did you think of this movie? Did you enjoy it? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.